Hey everybody, in this video we are going to be exploring an example problem um, of applying Poisson's ratio and the Poisson effect to an axially loaded rod. So if you take a look at our given information, we have an axially loaded rod um, and we are being asked to compute the change in its diameter and its new diameter. And then uh, we're being told to assume linear elastic behavior we're given a modulus of elasticity of 10,000 KSI, and then we're given a Poisson ratio of 0.34. So here's, here's our rod. Uh, we have this axially loaded rod, and we notice that it's being loaded in tension. So um, you can tell by the forces on, on either side of the rod pulling on it uh, with a magnitude of 0.5 kips, which of course is 500 pounds. The original length of the rod is 12 inches, and its original diameter, and we're, we're, you know, we can pretty safely assume in this problem it's a uniform diameter throughout the length of the rod, uh, but its original diameter is 0.75 inches, okay? So let's go ahead and tackle this problem. We're going to say solution, and uh, as always, you want to write this down, okay? Usually... Um, you know, watching or listening to a video with calculations isn't good enough. This is not a spectator sport. You need to participate by writing this down and taking notes. So let's go ahead and um, start with our governing equation. That's what I like to do. I always like to uh, start with the governing equation, especially since I know this is a Poisson ratio kind of problem. So we can say Poisson ratio is equal to negative epsilon uh, lateral um, divided by epsilon axial, okay? So um, that's where we can get started. And of course, we are given that that value of Poisson ratio is 0.34. And so what, we, what we're being asked to compute is um, something involving the diameter, right? Because the problem says, what's the change in diameter and the new diameter? So how do we, how do we get that information? How do, we, how do we extract that information from this governing equation? Well, we remember that for this particular um, diagram, you have a rod that's experiencing axial tension. The diameter um, and the change in diameter is going to come into play with the lateral strain, okay? The lateral strain. So think about what is the Poisson effect doing to this rod? I can sketch out um, generally what is going to happen to this rod. If I have this rod here that's experiencing this axial tension, remember this thing is going to tend to elongate, right? It's going to tend to get longer, um, but simultaneously, because of the Poisson effect, its diameter is going to decrease. So it may have a deformed shape kind of like this. Okay, of course, this is exaggerated, um, where this is our new diameter. This is our new diameter that is going to be smaller than our original diameter that is here, of course. Okay. So again, you got to think about what's happening conceptually, all right? So again, this is in the lateral direction. So what we can do is rearrange our Poisson um, ratio relationship and say epsilon lat is equal to negative Poisson ratio times epsilon axial, all right? Um, so that's where we, uh, where we are at this point. We already know the Poisson ratio, of course, that's 0.34. So what we really need to do is calculate epsilon axial. So we're gonna say compute epsilon axial, all right? So the question now is how do we do that? Well, the problem said assume linear elastic behavior, okay? So because we're assuming linear elastic behavior, we can write this statement, assuming linear elastic behavior allows us to use Hooke's law. Spelled that wrong. Let's see. Hooke's law. Okay. And so what does Hooke's law say? Hooke's law says that um, you can relate stress and strain by uh, a proportionality constant, which is called the modulus of elasticity. So Hooke's law says uh, average normal stress equals modulus of elasticity times average normal strain, okay? Now, in our particular case, what, do, what is this stress and what is this strain? Well, for us, this stress, 
that we are interested in in, in Hooke's Law is the axial stress. And this strain that we are interested in in Hooke's Law is the axial strain, okay? And so what we can do is we can use Hooke's Law and we can rearrange it. We can say sigma axial equals modulus elasticity times epsilon axial. And then we can say epsilon axial equals sigma axial divided by modulus of elasticity, okay? So do we have these things? Do we have um, modulus of elasticity and sigma axial? We definitely have modulus of elasticity. That was given to us in the problem statement as 10,000 KSI. Do we have sigma axial? Not directly, but we can easily get it, right? How do we get sigma axial? Well, sigma axial is just the axial force, F axial, divided by the original cross-section area. We have information on both of those. So the, the, the applied axial force is 0.5 uh, kips, and that was in tension, so I'll put a little T there as a reminder. And then what's the cross-section area? Well, you have the diameter, right? So you would say pi times that diameter squared divided by four. Pi d squared over four is uh, how you calculate the cross-section area of something with a circular cross-section. So I'm gonna uh, pull out my TI-36X Pro calculator. I love that calculator. And I'm gonna go to town in calculating um, this right now. So please take your calculator out and, and calculate along with me. And so um, in calculating sigma axial, I get 1.3 I'm sorry, I get 1.132, uh, I'm going to just take it to four sig figs, KSI, kips per square inch, that's just a stress calculation. Now, I can enter into my epsilon axial equation, and I can say, let's uh, color coordinate, I'm just going to color coordinate this as red, epsilon axial is going to be 1.3. Three, uh, sorry, 1.132 KSI divided by 10,000 KSI. And let's see what that comes out to be. Um, well, obviously, that's just 0 0.000 uh, 1132. And again, uh, it's, it's a strain, so it's kind of like unitless, okay? Um, notice that KSI over KSI cancels. So that's my... Um, Sigma, that's my epsilon axial. Now I am ready to go into my epsilon lateral equation here, okay? Um, so I can calculate, again, I'm color coordinating, epsilon lateral as negative Poisson ratio times x epsilon axial, and that becomes negative 0.34 times 0. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 3, 2, and epsilon lateral equals what? Uh, let's see, I get 0 0.12340s, um, 3848. Now, I'm going to have a negative there, okay? Where is that negative coming from? Well, that negative is coming from our formula for Poisson ratio. Now, does this negative make sense? Does it make sense that epsilon lateral comes out to be a numerical negative? Yes, okay? The reason why is because we are contracting in the lateral direction. We are, our cross-section area is getting smaller um, in that lateral direction. So another way you can write this is 0 0.00003848, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then you can put contraction, contraction out here. Um, in parentheses, okay? And so uh, this is epsilon lat, we're almost done, okay? What we were really asked to calculate is uh, the change in diameter and its new diameter. So how do we do that? Well, we just remember the basic definition of strain, right? So the basic definition of strain is what? Well, it's epsilon equals a deformation divided by an original, so I say deformation divided by an original dimension, 
okay? And so for us, in this problem, we can say epsilon lat is gonna be equal to the change in diameter, I'm gonna call that delta D, divided by the original diameter, okay? And so uh, I can rearrange this and I can say the change in diameter, delta D, is gonna be equal to the original diameter times epsilon lat. And so the original diameter was 0.75 inches, and I'm gonna multiply that by uh, epsilon lat, which was negative 0.00003848, and I get a change in diameter of negative 0 0.00004 zeros, uh, 2886 inches, right? Because uh, track your units. Epsilon uh, strain does not carry uh, explicit units, but that original diameter does. It has units of inches, so my inches get carried down. The negative comes along with that uh, epsilon lat. So that means that we have a decrease in diameter of this amount, okay? So we have a, we can write a little comment here. The diameter has decreased by 0. 0.00002886 inches. So that's one of our answers. Now, uh, the other part of the question said, what is the new diameter? So we're going to say, I'll call that D final for um, the new slash final diameter. And so that's easy enough to determine. We say the final diameter is the original diameter minus, uh, well, I guess plus uh, the change in diameter, um, but that change in diameter is a negative number. So we'll say 0.75 inches minus uh, 0.0002886 inches. So again, we're, we have a negative sign here because the new diameter is going to be less than the um, original diameter. So the final diameter is going to be what? Um, it's going to be equal to 0 0.749 uh, nine, nine inches. So just a small change in diameter due to that applied loading. So here, you know, you can make a summary um, and summarize your final results, but that's it in a nutshell. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe.